chair of the Arts Commission. And we have a lot of Arts Commissioners here today. And I'm not going to introduce you all because there's way too many of you. So why don't you just raise your hand and let everybody know where the Arts Commission is. Thank you very much. Good job. And we have Steve here from the council. And that's nice. I'm just going to give you a little bit of background on this thing. Um, the Cultural Arts Plan was put into progress last year, and we're fulfilling it. Part of that is temporary art. And we had some temporary art put up at the beginning of the year at the City Hall. And this is our second venture. So I wanted everybody to understand the background behind all of this. So let me introduce to you Steve Dickro, Dick who's going to give you a few words. Thank you, Michael. I want to start by, by apologizing to our artists. Apparently, our public arts, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, which group was it? Public, public Works committed a crime last night and removed the work of art. <laughs> it was vandalism of some sort. So I'm so embarrassed and I'm so uh, apologetic to you. We, we should do better. And, and I want to just say a few words, if you'll all indulge me, about the relationship I, I think there is between art and what I consider there to be a crisis and kindness in this country. Over the last few years, we've all been sitting around and watching, and we've seen lack of civility. We've seen bullying going on, and we've seen that this is becoming customary and acceptable in our society. And we're seeing that no longer are we having free flow debates and dialogue among people when we disagree. No, it's whoever can shout the loudest wins the argument. And worst of all, the ends justify the means. If you believe in your cause, it doesn't matter what you do, you just do it because your cause is right. And it's reached a climax to me in the last week when I watched a, uh, a member of Congress advocating to her, um, her supporters that they should go out and harass other public officials, elected officials and public officials. Don't let them eat in public. Don't let them go to a movie. Don't let them have the peace and quiet in their homes. Well, I don't think this is acceptable. I know we can do better than that. And so uh, what, what should we do? Well, I think we need to embrace certain values. We need to embrace values of compassion. We need to embrace kindness, empathy, and love. And when we do that, we start making the world a kinder and better place. We need to respect other people's rights. We need to, to show respect to other people. And ultimately, ultimately, what difference can any of us make? Individuals can make a difference. Each one of us is like a small pebble. And when you throw that small pebble into a large body of water, it creates a ripple and it goes all the way through that body of water. Each one of us can be that pebble. Each one of us can make that difference. And when we look around today and we see art, what does art do? Art inspires. Artists inspire. And I'm so proud of the city of Laguna Beach because of how much we embrace art. And, and today, the culmination is with our artist here today and with his new piece of work. So thank you all for letting me drone on about kindness, but that has to be what our goal is. I love everything you said. Everything. Thank you all for being here. Um, thank you uh, specifically to the Arts Council and the Arts Commission, and thank you to Sean for all you've done to help with this. Um, since he gave me such a great segue into you know what the work is about, the work is about um, uh, that empathy that you were talking about. Um, the work is also specifically about um, uh, ourselves because I think a lot of what occurs in that is that uh, we don't have um, we don't have self empathy, and I think that there's a, a lot of um, a lot of alienation that goes on in our culture. Um, the this work comes from street art, so it comes from. Uh, things that would be similar to graffiti that a lot of us think are graffiti, but um, street artists are operating in a, in a way to counteract advertising. And advertising at its core is alienating. It's designed to say to you that you smell, so you should buy deodorant. But it starts with telling you that there's a problem with you. You're not happy enough. You're, um, you, people don't think you're, you're rich enough, whatever it is. And if you buy these products, then that will fulfill that need. But so our culture is really about triggering these ideas of um, a lack within ourselves. 
And so this work is designed to, um, to compete with those messages and to say that you're whole as you are and you don't need any of these products and to try and address some of that um, self-care of, uh, of us being okay. So the messages that are in it are about immediacy and being present in the moment and being okay with who we are when we're present in that moment. So, and I think that that's a, that's a key to empathy and that's a key to all the things that you were saying are lacking in our culture. So I think that they're, that's specifically what I'm addressing with that. But also, it's interesting that since the work does come from this um, uh, street art, you know, what some people would consider graffiti or vandalism, that I think that the narrative of what occurred with the work, I think is actually, um, to me, it's really important. It's, it's, really, it's really fascinating because um, my, my father has uh, gone through an evolution in his understanding of what art is in the past few years because of the work I've been doing. And I said, well, it's interesting that now you see art in a different way. I think the people who took the signs out probably haven't made that evolution quite yet. And maybe this might be a way for them to participate in that evolution. But I was saying, if, if this were a sculpture of a dolphin, they wouldn't have come down here and pulled it out. They would have said, oh, this is art. I can understand it's art. Oh, I'm sure it's fine. But because of the materials I'm using, because of the way I'm using it, that it's actually, um, it is, it's intended to be subversive. And it's intended to work as a subversive medium. And so the fact that someone thought it was subversive and vandalism kind of reinforces that. So I think that's a fantastic story. And that's something that, you know, I, I couldn't have built into the work that it, it did it on its own. So I love the, the story that goes with it. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to, to be here in, uh, in Laguna, in a place that uh, so um, admires the arts a place that really um, puts their energy into the arts and to showcase in an environment like this with other fantastic art um, is really inspirational to me. So I really appreciate being invited to um, be part of this program and to be part of the um, temporary art installation program and I look forward to what else you come up with and what you do with next. That's Chuck Froschauer, our artist. And uh, we're going to have a little unveiling. So I want to thank um, the lodging establishments um, of Laguna Beach and the city and the city council and um, Sean Poschel. Does everybody know Sean? And Mike McGregor. And once again, all the art commissioners. And uh, we have a little reception. You're all invited to come on over to uh, the Royal Hawaiian after this. And. Uh, that's oh, and obviously so, yeah. there, there are five of them, so if we're, we're yes. standing here with the, one, but uh, there are four It's, it's a good point, so wander around a little bit, because there are five of them in different places around Heisler Park. Different pieces. And they'll be up for, yeah, and they'll, and they'll be up for 12 months. Thank you all for being here. <laughs>